In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create an animated glowing button in Figma. Let's dive in. First, let's start creating our button. I'm going to hit T on my keyboard to select a text tool. And I'm just going to type, let's say magic. There it is. I'm going to increase the font size to 17 and it's going to be regular. All right, now I'm going to hit shift and A to add other layout to it like this. And I'm going to rename it to button. Now let me just change the padding quickly. Okay, it looks fine. Now I'm going to add a stroke to it. Here is our border and I'm just going to increase the corner radius to make it completely rounded. Great, now that our button is ready, let's go ahead and create a gradient. Here, I'm just going to change this solid color to a gradient. The type of gradient could be linear. And here we have two colors. I'm just going to select this one and I'm just going to change it to something else. It could be purple, it could be blue, whatever you like. I'm just going to change it to maybe blue. There it is. Now I'm just going to copy this hex color code and paste it for this second one. But here I'm going to decrease the opacity down to 0% and we are almost done. The next thing we need to do is change the position of this color, okay? Because later we are going to animate this gradient and if we leave it as is, we are going to run into many issues. So I'm just going to select it, hold down the shift key on my keyboard, and I'm going to make sure that it's aligned to the center of this frame of this button. Okay. This is very important. Keep that in mind. Now I'm going to add some drop shadow to this button. So here I'm just going to add an effect. It's going to be drop shadow. And as for the color, I'm going to choose the same blue. And here I'm going to set the Y to zero because we don't need to offset our drop shadow. And I'm going to increase the blur just like this. But now, as you can see, we only have the blur around this stroke, not around the whole button. The reason is in order to see the drop shadow around our button completely, we need to have a fill as well. Okay. So I'm just going to add a fill and I'm going to change it to dark blue, just like this. Okay. So this is going to be the default state of our button. All right, great. Let me just decrease the opacity of our drop shadow. It's too harsh. I'm just going to decrease it to maybe 40%, just like this to make it subtle. Okay. Now we need to turn it into a component. So I'm just going to click on this little icon. And also we are going to create a component set. So I'm going to click on this icon now to add a variant. And here we have a component set. Okay. So here is our second variant. We just need to change the direction of our linear gradient now. So here I'm just going to grab this node, hold down the shift key on my keyboard and just move it to the right side and just place it right here. Make sure not to reposition this node. Next, I'm going to duplicate this one. And we are going to repeat the same thing. We just need to change the direction of our linear gradient. And I'm going to duplicate it once again. And let me change it like this. And we are done. So now the only thing left is to just connect these variants and make them animated. Before we move on, I'd like to take a moment to introduce our today's sponsor. Skillshare. I'm currently using Skillshare to enhance my productivity as a creator. Recently, I completed an excellent class called Productivity for Creators, Systems, Organization, and Workflow by Ali Abdal. Staying productive can be challenging for me, especially with the numerous design projects and courses I manage. However, this class has significantly helped me maintain consistency, stay motivated, and tackle procrastination as a designer and content creator. If you haven't heard of Skillshare, it's the largest online learning community for creatives with thousands of on-demand classes led by industry experts across film, illustration, design, freelance, productivity, and many more. If you're not sure where to start, you can use one of their learning paths. A learning path includes several hand-picked classes that are meant to be taken in order. They are available in a range of experience levels from beginner to advanced and a variety of categories including design, productivity, freelancing, marketing, and many others. So this summer, if you want to take your career, skills, or side hustle to the next level, the first 500 people to use my link in the description will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare. Don't miss out. So I'm going to head over to the prototype tab, select this default variant, and just connect it to this one. Here I'm going to set the trigger to after delay, just like this. And I'm going to set this delay to one millisecond, like this. 
and it's going to be smart animate. And here's an important thing. Make sure not to use is out here. I know for most micro interactions, you tend to use this is out because you want to make it more realistic. But for this specific use case, it's better to use linear. Why? Because we don't want this stroke to speed up and slow down, then speed up and slow down again, okay? It's better to have a linear speed in this case. And here I'm gonna set the duration to 1000. You can just decrease or increase it as you wish. And I'm gonna connect this variant to this one. It's gonna be after delay, one millisecond. And we don't need to change anything else. Let me connect this one to the last variant after delay and one millisecond. And finally, we need to connect this last variant to this first one because we want to have a loop animation. So I'm just going to select this one and just connect it to this first variant after delay, one millisecond, and we are done. Now it's time to give it a try and see how it works. So I'm just going to hit A on my keyboard and draw a simple frame and just change the background color to dark blue like this. Then let me create an instance of this button and just align it to the center. Simply select this frame and preview it. There it is. It's beautiful, isn't it? But you might ask, how does this button work? Because now we cannot click on it. We cannot hover over it. So here we just connected this variant to this first one to create the loop effect, right? What we can do instead is just remove this interaction the one that we just created, duplicate this last variant and just change the gradient here, the direction like this to make it look like our default variant. And now I'm going to connect this one to this last variant. It's going to be after delay. It's going to be one millisecond and the rest should be intact. Now we need to connect this variant to our second variant. So we will connect it to this second variant. It's going to be after delay one millisecond like that. And finally, we are going to select this first variant and change its trigger from after delay to unclick. Okay. Now let's give it a try once again and see how it works. Okay. Here is our button. I'm going to click on it. Perfect. As you can see, we have our loop animation. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you found it helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more design tutorials. Have a great day and see you next time.